Here's adventure. Here's romance. Here's O. Henry's famous Robin Hood of the Old West, the Disco Kid. ought to be pulling a plow. What do you think he used to do? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll race you to old lady Perry's place. You're on. I'll tell you what else I'll do. I'll give you a head start. Well... Still making little six out of big ones? Someday Dan's going to be a rich farmhand. Have any better ideas for making money? A few. For a man with big ideas, I see you still haven't got your new saddle. Well, guess what? The clerk of the dry goods won't let him have it till he comes in with the money. You shut up. I'll get that saddle yet and a stallion to go with it. Oh, excuse me. How's your shooting improved since last week, Buck? I'll still take you. Well, we'll see about that. Sharpshooters first. Well, there's the bottles. Have a go with them. this racket. We ain't hurting nothing, Mrs. Perry. No one said you were, but I'm not paying Dan to shoot at bottles. Ray and I seem to have some time on our hands. You ain't got a job around here for us, have you? Well, I reckon I could use you for an hour or two. You and your brother can begin by cleaning up the barn. That ain't exactly the kind of job I was talking about. I sort of had in mind a troubleshooter job. Watch this. Could use a man with talent like that, couldn't you? A man? When you finish wasting your time, Dan, I have a chore for you to do in the house. That old crow could afford to give us a good job if she had a mind to. Oh, forget it. I ain't about to forget. Come on, Ray, let's set up some more bottles. Look where that shooting coming from. Sounds like it's coming from Mrs. Perry's barn. Let's wait and see. Huh? What are you doing? Brushing up on your target practice? What's it to you? Yeah, you talk nice to us, so we will tell your daddy you're playing hooky in school. Mm. You two looking for trouble? I think you have already found it. Wait a minute, Pancho. These boys think they're brave by playing with guns. If you make them angry, they may hurt themselves. I'll show you how to take them down a peg. How are you with a gun, Big Mouth? I'll bet you can't even hit those bottles. Those little bottles? <laughs> I can hit them with my eyes closed. Wait a minute, Pancho. You all right, Pancho? Yes, I'm all right, Cisco. I still got my fingers, but the bullet... You dent my lucky ring a little bit. You're lucky I didn't aim for your head. Is this the only way you can prove your courage? You know a better way? Next time you risk a man's life just to show off to your friends, you may not be so lucky. Here you are, Pancho. What's keeping you so long, Dan? Well, I'll be hogtied if it ain't Cisco and Pancho. You two ain't a sight for sore eyes. What happened to your hand, Poncho? The coyote bite me. Mrs. Perry, you better take a look at it. Well, get in the house and I'll see if you live. 
Buck, you almost bit off more than you could chew. I ain't backing down from no man. How? Oh, did you get a load of that saddle? No. What saddle? The one out there. Sort of makes the one you want look sick. Kind of figures a Cisco kid would have a good looking saddle. Cisco kid? Sure. If you'd have been listening, you'd heard his pal call him Cisco. I wonder what he's doing here. I'll bet that old crow's gonna give them the job we should have had. I'll pull out if she does. What? And give up that great job of yours? Why, you wouldn't even dare nose around and see what they're up to. I'll nose around all right. You and Ray stay here in the barn and wait for me. If you take that ring off your finger, maybe it could bandage your hand right. Mm, yeah, wait a minute. That is my gold good luck ring. Well, that gold ring is turning your finger green. Turn my finger green, maybe that's good luck. It means you got a brass ring. You made quite a few changes since we were here last. If you mean all these tables, that's my new business. You don't tell me you in the table business? When John passed away, I made up my mind to open up a restaurant here for the passengers on the stage line. Stage passes right by here, and it's a good place for them to stop off and get some good home cooking. Hey, Cisco, that's a good idea, huh? Say, uh, Mrs. Perry, do you know who those boys were in the barn? Dan works for me, and the other two scallywags are friends of his. They play too much with guns to be friends to anybody. Of course they're wild, but what 17-year-old ain't? If them other two were more like Dan, I'd hire them if I could afford them. Mrs. Perry, Pancho and I will be very glad to give you a hand until you open the restaurant. Well, I'm not one to turn down free help, and goodness knows I could use it. We'll be very glad to oblige. Will we not, Pancho? Yeah, we will. Well, I'll get rid of this mess, and then we'll go in and pick up some supplies. Are those two going to be hanging around here? Couldn't have been listening at the door, could you, Dan? Don't you trust me? Of course I do. But it's just that, well, we got more work around here than you and I can handle, and you know it. Cisco's just going to help me pick up some supplies. I still don't like them. You come off that kind of talk. I don't aim to stand for no small talk about two fine men like Cisco and Poncho. You better get off your high horse, young man. Yeah, maybe you're right. Let's get going. Pancho, you better stay here and keep an eye on things. What'd you find out inside? Those two are going to be around for quite a while. Doesn't make any difference. I've already figured out how we can take Cisco down a peg and I can get that new saddle all at the same time. If it's what I'm thinking, he's got me in for a third of the old biddy's money. Rob Mrs. Perry? Why not? Think of the joke we'll have on Cisco and Poncho. Taking the money right from under their noses. She needed guards. Now she'll wish she hired us. Well, we could sure show up Poncho. Cisco and Mrs. Perry did go to town for supplies. Left Poncho in charge. You know where she keeps the money? Yeah, in a black metal box in a chest of drawers in the front room. Well, hold on. You and Ray stay here. Let me go keep Poncho occupied. Then you can sneak into the front room. All right. But uh, don't lose your nerve, Danny boy. Give me about five minutes. The cookbook say to tell her the ah, party cake. Measure into the bowl two and a half cups of flour and one teaspoon full of salt. Ah, let me see. Good. All right. There's about a cup of salt. And there's another cup of salt. And there's the I have a cup of salt, eh? Now, one little, nice, that's too big. One little teaspoon 
full of flour, huh? <laughs> and, and another little pinch of salt for good luck. Hey, what you doing? What I'm doing, I'm building a cake. What it look like I'm doing? Doing is right. That stuff looks like plaster. Yeah, look like plaster, but maybe you, go, you, you would like to have a taste of it when it's all finished, huh? Hey, will you please give me two whole eggs over there? Yeah, you laugh, huh? You laugh. But that's what the cookbook say. Look, you say, add two whole eggs. <laughs> Why don't you throw in the whole book and make a real mess of it? Oh, <laughs> you a real funny little boy, huh? One tastes more beautiful than the cake made by my cousin Carmelita, and she makes the best cake in all Mexico. Yeah, what's it gonna taste like? <laughs> you will you see. Keep an eye, I'll get the money. Let's get out of here. See, it sounds like somebody's in there. Uh, probably Mrs. Harry's old dog. Yeah, if it is, a dog is wearing boots. Get out of the way. Yeah. You fight pretty good with your feet, huh? I didn't trip you. You just fell over your own big feet. Is that so? Something going on around here I don't like. What do you mean? What I mean, those two friends of you, they leave you like the pants was on fire. So what? Whatever's going on around here, you got something to do with. You gonna tell me what it is? I don't have to tell you nothing. All right, you wait till the Senor and Cisco get back. Maybe you can tell them, huh? <laughs> I won't be here when they get back. You can just tell Miss Perry I quit. Quit, huh? That's right. I didn't take this job just to hear you mouth off. I'll be back to pick up my pay. Every time I open my feet, I put my mouth in it. I'll get you the money for these supplies before I forget. I wonder where Dan is. He should have been here before to help unload the wagon. Cisco, after you leave, lots of things happen. Those boys, they... My money! My money box is gone. Those boys take it. I knew this would happen when I lose my good luck ring. You mean to say that Dan stole my money? Hmm? He's gone and so is the money. Dan must have had a hand in it. Now look here, Cisco. I don't plan on having that boy getting in no trouble over $80. All I want to do is talk to him. Have you got any idea where he went? You just aim on talking to him? Now, Mrs. Perry, you know me better. You know I wouldn't harm a young boy, even if he did wrong. You might have gone over to the old line cabin on the Carter place. That's where you and John stayed when you went out hunting. I know that place well. Pancho, you stay here, just in case they return. Yeah, I knew these things would happen when I lose my good luck ring. So fast. Took the shortcut through Coleman Pass. Don't close that window. You want to get somebody's head bashed in? See, if you close the window, it'll pull that rope tight and knock the jug right off the beam. See, that way it'll land on who's other standing underneath it. Still hoping to catch someone in some of your traps. Sir. Well, how'd we do? 60, 70, 75, 80 rotten dollars. You call that a lot of money? Is that all? I saw the check from the insurance company. It came to $700. Why, I bet that... You crazy? You want to get us hung for a measly $80? Well, he's got no business hanging around here. Buck's right. Let's see what he has to say first. Then we can always take care of him. But you're gonna. I'm still running this setup. I 
That's far enough. We got you covered. I've come to talk business. Leave your gun outside. Come in slow with your hands up. What's on your mind? I don't talk business with anybody pointing a gun at me. Oh, put up your gun, Buck. You ain't gonna try anything with the three of us. All right, out with it. I suppose you haven't heard yet that Mrs. Perry was robbed. It's news to us. Look, boys, Mrs. Perry is very hard pressed for money right now. I came here with my saddle. It's for sale. How much? Ninety dollars. What's the catch? That saddle's easily worth two hundred. I know that. It's worth more than that. But all I want out of it is the exact amount that was stolen from Mrs. Perry. Ninety dollars. Ninety dollars? Does that surprise you? You seem nervous. Maybe it's because this is the box that Mrs. Patty held her money in. You know too much for your own good. Close the window, Dan. What fuck? I'll get it. All right, Cisco. All right. Throw your guns on the bunk. Hey, come over here, all of you. I gave you a chance. Now, I'm not going to fool around with you anymore. It's the sheriff or the money. What will it be? You win, Cisco. Here's the money. That's better. Danny, Mrs. Patty is not the kind of a woman who holds grudges. You can come back to the ranch with me. He's staying with us. I'll hear that from Danny himself. Oh, you got what you came after. Besides, Miss Perry doesn't need me anymore. As you say. But Danny, you may need her help. Boy, you sure back water fast when the cards are down. Well, you gave him the money. I'll give up eighty dollars any day to make five hundred. Five hundred? I don't get you. Danny boy is going to show us a shortcut back to the ranch. We're going to relieve the old crow of the rest of that insurance money before Cisco ever gets there. I don't know. The idea just don't set much with me anymore. I didn't ask if you liked it. You weren't much help when Cisco was here, you know. It's time to make yourself useful. Mama's little helper. Get going. Oh, you poor little potato. You got such beautiful eyes. Go out the barn and get me some eggs, will you, Pancho? Oh, you know, if I didn't have lost my good luck ring, I wouldn't have to pick potatoes and peel eggs. <laughs> bueno. Oh. I better stay here and keep watch. Ray will keep an eye out. I need you. Well, Dan, you little rascal, Stop where you been? Tell her why you're here, Dan. I come for my pay. Well, there ain't any money. Them scalawags took all of it the last time they were here. That's a lie, and you know it. Now, where have you got the rest of the money? You hold your tongue. Buck? She says she hasn't got the money. She hasn't. Damn. You get them scalawags to give you your share of the $80. Listen, you old crow. I know you've got more money, and if you don't give it to Why, us... Why, calling me an old crow, you little whippersnapper, I'll let you out. No. Buck, not so rough. Leave me alone. Ray, keep them covered. I'll tear the place apart and find the rest of that money with or without Dan's help. Okay, get over there by the stove. Oh, 
I know who you are. Those boys, they sneak back here, huh? The boys are in the house. Cover the front of the house, Pancho. But Pancho, hold your fire. Remember, they're just boys. And sometimes it's hard to remember. Watch then. All right, boys, that's enough. Throw your guns out. Pancho's covering the front. Out of here when using her for a shield. Hold it, Dan, or I'll drop you. You try a stunt like that again, and I'll drop you without a warning. Okay, a woman, get over by the door. You hear me? He means it. You too, Dan. We're coming out, Cisco, and we've got Mrs. Perry. <laughs> enough for today. Pancho, cut the other one down. We'll take them into town. Not yet, Cisco. That little one's been needing the old-fashioned warm pants for a long time, and I'm gonna give it free of charge. <laughs> Come on. First, I'm gonna take away your pea shooter. Then, I'm gonna treat you just like your mama used to do. Turn around. Oh, stop it! Now, my Uncle Tito used to say, this is hurting me more than you. Stop it! Well, Danny, I talked to the sheriff and he agreed to release you in Mrs. Perry's custody. I want to thank you. I owe you and Mrs. Perry more than I'll ever be able to repay. Ah, <laughs> uh, you don't owe us nothing. Everyone's liable to get off on the wrong foot once in a while. I want to thank you, ma'am. Pancho? Hmm? I thought you'd like to taste a piece of your cake. I asked it for you. Oh, Cinco, ain't that beautiful? That's a beautiful <laughs> cake, Pancho. Oh, oh boy. Mm. Oh, Cinco. <laughs> mm. What's the matter, Pancho? Mm. Cinco, look, I'm lucky. <laughs> I, I find my good luck ring. That's lucky. <laughs> what do you mean, lucky? Well, it was lucky when I bite into the cake. I didn't broke my tooth. Oh, Pancho. <laughs> Adios, until we see you again, amigos. Hasta la vista. <laughs>
Williams romance. Here's O. Henry's famous Robin Hood of the Old West, the Disco Kid. ought to be pulling a plow. What do you think he used to do? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll race you to old lady Perry's place. You're on. I'll tell you what else I'll do. I'll give you a head start. Well... Still making little six out of big ones? Someday Dan's going to be a rich farmhand. Have any better ideas for making money? A few. For a man with big ideas, I see you still haven't got your new saddle. Well, guess what? The clerk of the dry goods won't let him have it till he comes in with the money. You shut up. I'll get that saddle yet and a stallion to go with it. Oh, excuse me. How's your shooting improved since last week, Buck? I'll still take you. Well, we'll see about that. Sharpshooters first. Well, there's the bottles. Have a go at them. this racket. We ain't hurting nothing, Mrs. Perry. No one said you were, but I'm not paying Dan to shoot at bottles. Ray and I seem to have some time on our hands. You ain't got a job around here for us, have you? Well, I reckon I could use you for an hour or two. You and your brother can begin by cleaning up the barn. That ain't exactly the kind of job I was talking about. I sort of had in mind a troubleshooter job. Watch this. Could use a man with talent like that, couldn't you? A man? When you finish wasting your time, Dan, I have a chore for you to do in the house. That old crow could afford to give us a good job if she had a mind to. Oh, forget it. I ain't about to forget. Come on, Ray, let's set up some more bottles. Look where that shooting coming from. Sounds like it's coming from Mrs. Patty's barn. Let's wait and see. Huh? What are you doing? Brushing up on your target practice? What's it to you? Yeah, you talk nice to us, so we will tell your daddy you're playing hooky from school. Mm. You two looking for trouble? I think you have already found it. Wait a minute, Pancho. These boys think they're brave by playing with guns. If you make them angry, they may hurt themselves. I'll show you how to take them down a peg. How are you with a gun, Big Mouth? I'll bet you can't even hit those bottles. Those little bottles? <laughs> I can hit them with my eyes closed. Wait a minute, Pancho. You all right, Pancho? Yes, I'm all right, Cisco. I still got my fingers, but the bullet... It dent my lucky ring a little bit. You're lucky I didn't aim for your head. Is this the only way you can prove your courage? You know a better way? Next time you risk a man's life just to show off to your friends, you may not be so lucky. Here you are, Pancho. What's keeping you so long, Dan? Well, I'll be hogtied if it ain't Cisco and Pancho. You two ain't a sight for sore eyes. What happened to your hand, Poncho? A coyote bite me. Mrs. Perry, you better take a look at it. Well, get in the house and I'll see if you live. <laughs> Buck, you almost bit off more than you could chew. I ain't backing down from no man. Oh, did you get a load of that saddle? No. What saddle? The one out there. 
Sort of makes the one you want look sick. Kind of figures a Cisco kid would have a good looking saddle. Cisco kid? Sure. If you'd have been listening, you'd heard his pal call him Cisco. I wonder what he's doing here. I'll bet that old crow's gonna give them the job we should have had. I'll pull out if she does. What? And give up that great job of yours? Why, you wouldn't even dare nose around and see what they're up to. I'll nose around all right. You and Ray stay here in the barn and wait for me. If you take that ring off your finger, maybe it could bandage your hand right. Mm, yeah, wait a minute. That is my gold good luck ring. Well, that gold ring is turning your finger green. Got my finger green, maybe that's good luck. It means you got a brass ring. You made quite a few changes since we were here last. If you mean all these tables, that's my new business. You don't tell me you in the table business? When John passed away, I made up my mind to open up a restaurant here for the passengers on the stage line. Stage passes right by here, and it's a good place for them to stop off and get some good home cooking. Hey, Cisco, that's a good idea, huh? Say, uh, Mrs. Perry, do you know who those boys were in the barn? Dan works for me, and the other two scallywags are friends of his. They play too much with guns to be friends to anybody. Of course they're wild, but what 17-year-old ain't? If them other two were more like Dan, I'd hire them if I could afford them. Mrs. Perry, Pancho and I will be very glad to give you a hand until you open the restaurant. Well, I'm not one to turn down free help, and goodness knows I could use it. We'll be very glad to oblige. Will we not, Pancho? Yeah, we will. Well, I'll get rid of this mess, and then we'll go in and pick up some supplies. Are those two going to be hanging around here? Couldn't have been listening at the door, could you, Dan? Don't you trust me? Of course I do. But it's just that, well, we've got more work around here than you and I can handle. And you know it. Cisco's just going to help.